Honourable members, please be seated. Honourable members, we will continue with the debate on this agenda item, and I give the floor to the Honourable Minister Rosie Agba. You have the floor, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Mr. Speaker, sir, I rise to contribute to the examination of the audit reports of government ministries and departments for the year ended 31st July 2016. I will concentrate on the Minister, uh, Ministry of Education's uh, uh, audit recommendations and findings. Uh, Mr. Speaker, say four issues um, highlighted by the four main issues highlighted by the by the report uh, included accountable advance, utilization of uh, building grants, the free education grant, and of course uh, the Fiji Higher Education uh, Grant Agreement. Um, during the course of the earlier presentation, honourable members mentioned a few other things. Uh, there is a question coming on. Uh, technical colleges as part of the oral question, Honorable Kepa, and uh, I will be responding to the issues that you raised. Thank you very much. Mr. Speaker, sir, uh, in terms of the, um, the report that highlighted the need for um, tightening up the uh, accountable advance, currently um, the ministry has, um, our, our officers are remi reminded to retire the accountable advance immediately after official tour and within seven days from end of official work program. For any sea passage and hotel accommodation, expenses is booked through PO rather than providing cash to the traveling officer. Late retirement penalties are charged if retirement surpasses seven days from end of official tour. We are recovering uh, money through salary deductions, and this is activated if accountable advance retirement lapses beyond seven days from end of the official tour. Accountable advances are also paid into requested officer's bank account through electronic tra fund transfer. This will enable the of officer to withdraw as and when cash is needed rather than carrying cash on hand. Stale checks. Um, printing of checks has been uh, discouraged. Therefore, all suppliers have provided the bank account details. Payment to suppliers is done through electronic fund transfer. Payment to bank is now done through online transactive banking. Checks uh, are only printed for reimbursement of impressed account for ministry. And of course, so having all that uh, controls put in, the issue of unpresented checks is no more of an issue to the ministry. Uh, Mr. Speaker said there was also findings about the Fiji Higher Education Grant. The audited, the audited reports um, found out that there was a lack of uh, a grant agreement. So currently, the ministry is now ensuring that all statutory bodies, including the Fiji Higher Education Commission, the higher education institutions, our cultural organizations under the ministry, the grant agreements are vetted, signed prior to disbursement of any grant funds. Acquittals for the previous quarter needs to be provided to the ministry before we release any further grants. Without the signed agreements, the grant funds to uh, the higher education institutions, cultural organizations, the statutory bodies are not released. To ensure continuous compliance to this, the Ministry has also implemented a grant compliance checklist for release of grants to all these bodies that come under the Ministry of Education. Mr. Speaker says, part of its mandated function, uh, the Higher Education Commission is also responsible for the disbursement and monitoring of the annual operational grants that we give to 10 higher education institutions. These institutions are uh, the Center for Appropriate Technology Development, Corpus Christi Teachers College, Fiji National University, Fulton Adventist University College, Monfort Boys Town, Monfort Technical Institute, the Sangam Institute of Technology, Vivekananda Technical College, University of Fiji, and the University of the South Pacific. The ministry also now ensures that grants to cultural organizations are disembursed after acquittal reports are properly verified and latest audited financial reports are submitted. Grants are withheld if acquittals are not in order or the audited financials are not submitted. To ensure continuous compliance to this, the Ministry has also implemented a grant compliance checklist for release of grants to statutory bodies and, and the other organizations. Currently, we give grants to four statutory bodies, 
and four cultural organizations. Mr. Speaker, say, uh, there was mention of a free education grant. The free education grant was initiated by the um, Fiji First Government in uh, 2014, and we continue to improve our processes in ensuring effective use of the grant, man grant management in schools. And of course, we have just revised a management handbook, um, school management handbook 2020, and this, had, this has been realigned to our famous accordingly. One of these processes, when we talk about Im uh, improvements in grant management, was we designed additional reports in our FEMIS uh, finance module to enable closer monitoring of expenditure against each of the six allocations. The Ministry has also designed and implementing a bank reconciliation process, which will help ensure that all expenditures incurred by the school from the free education grant are accounted for in FEMIS. And of course, we very strictly centralize grants when, we, when there is an abuse reported to us by the, by the audit team. Uh, this year, we implemented the new School Management Handbook 2020, which clear, clearly outlines the process of violence. The funds that we give to the schools uh, come in many categories. 30% of the funds the schools are, are to use for administration and office operations. 20% is for building and compound maintenance. 15% of the grant is used for IT computers and test materials. 10% is used for library and textbooks. 10% for physical education, arts, music, and of course 15% for teaching and learning materials. The schools and the heads of schools and the managements are to ensure that the grants are specifically used for the allocations. However, we have found out that schools accumulate funding under this uh, the FEG allocation and there is a buy-in process. If there is extra funding and the schools need uh, the funding for other building and infrastructure need, they write to the permanent secretary and get environment approval. And we have over the years seen that some of the schools have actually accumulated a lot of funding and we want them to utilize that. Mr. Speaker, sir, we have also uh, automated the payment of grants for FEMIS in early 2020. The grant payment schedule is being generated based on the FEMIS audited school rules. There's also, uh, now we will also uh, implement the grant agreement with the heads of schools. One change that we made uh, to the management handbook is now allowing the head of school to be the principal signatory of the funds. In the recent past, it was the manage managers of the schools and their delegated reps who actually were the principal signatories for the use of this fund. In order to hold a civil servant responsible for government funds, we changed it and the, now the principal signatory for the usage of the fund is the school head, but obviously the school head and the school management decide on what the priorities for the schools are and how the money is being utilized. Uh, Mr. Speaker, say, um, in terms of building grants, I would like to uh, inform the House that the, out of the um, 910 schools, we only have 13 government schools, which is mostly maintained by government funding. The rest of the schools are committee-based schools, faith-based and management-owned schools. Regardless of that, government contributes for building maintenance. After T.C. Winston, the report also highlights uh, read the funds, that the funds that were re redirected for rehab and rebuild uh, purposes. T.C. Winston affected close to 295 schools, minor damages and total damages to that. Most of these were committee-run schools, faith-based organizations and management-run schools. As a government, we don't own the building, but we came in and invested 220 million plus in ensuring that we rebuild those schools. And schools that needed rehab, government invested money into that. So um, in, in terms of building grants, additional checks that we have, the funding is allocated to the asset management unit within the Ministry of Education under the leadership of a director. We, we work with the construction implementation unit to ensure that all procurement processes are in order. The additional checks, as highlighted by the, uh, the audit report, we have put it in place. Now we have signed agreement between the, the school management, the contractors, and the ministry, or the CIU. We thoroughly look at the scope of works, and of course, uh, the asset management unit monitors uh, the different phases of the project, and then finally, uh, the, the issuing of our comple completion certificate by a qualified engineer to mark the closure of the project. Um, in terms of utilizing the building grant, 50,000 below 
the ministry and the asset management unit can work with the, with the contractors and get the required three coats and we allow construction to happen. But anything over 50,000 goes to the government and the board to ensure that all the procurement processes are fulfilled. Uh, Mr. Speaker, say, um, I, can, I can assure the House that with tighter controls and more compliance, we are now in a better position to manage the funds that the Ministry of Education gets. Thank you. I thank the Honourable Minister. I now give the floor.